let's get started. And who am I? Uh, I'm Deepa. I am uh, one of the QE developers at Adobe. I, uh, I enjoy building websites. Um, and apart from building and testing, I also uh, work with communities. I'm one of the organizers at Google Developer Group San Jose chapter. I'm an active member at Women Who Code. And I'm also an ambassador at Women, Google Women Tech Makers. So every slide would have a Twitter handle on the right top. And you can also connect with me in LinkedIn. So what is that I expect out of this uh, uh, talk beforehand? I, I would want you to have some uh, knowledge about core JavaScript, ESX features. I'm not gonna go over this, but we'll be using those. And a little small amount of CSS as well. So this talk is packed with a lot of information. Please hold on to it. Uh, this is, um, you'll be starting with the intro and then we'll uh, talk about uh, core features. We'll have a small code along at the end. And from there, uh, what are the next steps for you to advance your React um, knowledge? Um, and then we'll wrap it up with a and a at the end. So we, what is React? React is a JavaScript library for building beautiful UI. React runs on the front end as a, a single page application, but it can also be used as a full stack application by communicating with uh, server APIs, popularly known as Merge Stack. Sometimes uh, it is also referred to as a framework because it's always compared to um, Angular and Vue.js. So Angular is a, has a built-in routing uh, capabilities, which React does not. And you need to install the routing package if you want to make it work. So hence, the stick on the official uh, website. It is referred to as a JavaScript library, and it's been created by Meta or Facebook. It was open sourced in uh, March of 2013. So uh, I picked this uh, graph from NPM. Um, here, if you see the graph shows that the number of uh, downloads that React has over the past five years, it's over, um, 12, over 12 million downloads so far. So clearly it shows that React is way ahead in the game uh, along with Angular and uh, Vue. So why React? We talked about it, it's popular. Uh, React is the view part of the MVC design pattern, and every component in React is dynamic, and it has it, its own state and data. So you don't need to separate out markups, uh, which is uh, particularly handled by JSX, which I'll be talking about very shortly. And apps built with React are very interactive because it uses something called this virtual DOM. Virtual DOM uh, only updates the part that needs to be updated on a web page without reloading the whole page. So, which is a huge benefit when it comes to the performance of the application. So, and also it is easy to manage data in React using one-way data binding as all the data is in state um, and it's immutable. So, but there, if you want to um, recreate the state, you could change it, but there are ways to do it. But in general, it is all, all the states are immutable. So finally, it's a most popular open source UI library out there with a huge community support. So what are the popular websites that uh, use React? You have Airbnb, um, Tesla, Atlassian, et cetera. So how do you get started with developing React apps? You can use standalone IDEs. Um, I, I personally use uh, Visual Studio for this talk. I would be using a browser ID called Code Sandbox. And inside, if you are using VS Code, you need to have a Node.js. And when you use, install uh, using NPM, you uh, by default, um, when you create the React app, it uses Yarn. If you wanna use Node modules, I use Node modules, so I have to use this flag. So you use, uh, uh, use NPM. And you, can, you have to separately install if you wanna use other CSS libraries. I also added a YouTube video which shows the exact steps of how to do it. This is the latest one, but there are outdated ones, but this is the latest one I picked up if you want to take a look at it. So what's the project structure look like? And um, if you create a React pro project using the NPM one that I told you, so it, this is the project structure. And if you see at the top, you have only one index.html and it contains only one div here. 
So it has a ID of root. Where is this thing used? Uh, it is used inside of index.js. This is your entry um, to React. So here it uses, it calls this ID and um, the app here is your root component, which is found in app.js. So how do we create React app using Code Sandbox? Please let me know if you can see my screen. Can you see my screen? Um, I, I don't know whether I'm sharing this, but if you're seeing this, um, you have to go create sandbox here and you can, this is a browser ID where you can create um, applications like React, Vanilla JavaScript, Vue, Angular, whatever. So this is a lightweight um, ID that you can get it online. So this is free, you can, you can use it. And let's now deep dive into the core features of React. We'll be talking about all these features. Let's dive into it right up. So what is JSX? JSX is JavaScript syntax extension. It's nothing but JavaScript XML. Basically, you can think of it as a cocktail of HTML and JavaScript together inside a React application. So for example, I have a variable with a string and then you can use it along inside a HTML tag and you can use this as a prop. So with that said, you can, you can have a JavaScript expression inside uh, JSX to make it dynamic. And note that React uses something, you, React uses camel case. So in a regular HTML, you would use class, but React uses uh, camel case. And it always returns uh, a single element and attributes uh, here are in camel case. And you should, be, you should follow the HTML semantics when you're using uh, JSX as well. So how do we render elements in React? Like I said before, React uses something called as virtual DOM and it updates only what is necessary. So now let's get a visual of this. So for example, on the left, you have React DOM and the right hand side, you have the browser DOM. So if you, if you have a Facebook, uh, if, if you go to Facebook and you try, try to add a comment, so what does React do here? It compares the comment element and its children to the previous one, and it applies the update only necessary. So it just goes ahead and updates only here, and it does not refresh the whole page. So you don't need to work with DOM APIs. You don't need to have uh, jQuery to listen to uh, the events. And that's how React uh, virtual DOM works. Um, and like I said, how does this rendering happen? It uses something called as uh, uh, React DOM.render inside of your uh, index.js file. This is this returns an element. So here, if I go ahead and show you a code sample here. Um, okay, so if I go ahead and inspect. So if you see here, this is this is how React renders. So note that just the time only changes. The other strings, in fact, even the period is not changing here. So that's how rendering works in React. So now let's move on to component. What is a component? Component is a, is a reusable piece of UI, which, which can be isolated, and then you can put it together. Think of component as a puzzle piece. Each and every puzzle piece would be a component by itself. And then when you put together, you make a web page. So um, every React project has app.js, which is the root component. Under the root component, you will have multiple uh, components, which are child components that thus forming a tree, tree of components. So you have a nav, um, nav bar, you have three sections and a footer. And each of them, think of it in terms of vanilla JavaScript, each component will act as a HTML, CSS, and JavaScript file together, okay? And now just giving a visual, another visual uh, here. So here is the Instagram page of Airbnb. I think I picked the wrong, uh, wrong web page. 
wrong uh, Instagram. This is an Airbnb page of inst inside of Instagram. So if you have to think of how components are created here, the nav bar would be a, se a separate component. The profile would be another separate component and the middle section and the post would be separate. So as you can see that these components are separate and they're put together to build comp complex websites like this. And now let's see how we can create components. Components can be created using class or you can, uh, you can also create it using functions. So um, when you create a class using, um, when you create a component, call, component using class, you use a couple, uh, couple of things. You use the state and the random method and which has a state. So you, earlier in React uh, ver before version 16, function, uh, functional component were just used only for displaying UA and they were stateless. So moving on to what is a state? A state uh, is an object that holds data that might change over the lifetime of a component. So this is, um, if I show you an example, you would understand much better. So here is, um, you're creating a class component which contains the state and the ra render method. State represents the data uh, we wanna display when the component is rendered and the render describes how the UI should look on the UI, uh, on the web page, right? The render method then gives both of them together, gives a JavaScript object, which is passed onto the DOM, virtual DOM of React, and DOM then displays it in the, um, um, updates the DOM of uh, the browser. Now, Earlier before, like I said, earlier before version 16, it was a functional component, creating a functional component for, was used only for static content. It was stateless. You can just display something on the, on the page and you can use error functions as well. So that's one thing. And I have a code sample, a quick um, code sample to show you as how it works. And if this thing loads up, Come on, okay. Um, here is a class component that I've created. Here, uh, I'm, I have created a class constructor and then it has a state. And note that I have uh, initialized it to uh, default to zero. And whenever you use a constructor and this, you need to use bind to uh, use, uh, to wrap it up with the bind, uh, with the, this keyword. And then um, here, if I go ahead and make a click event, it's going to update the counter using this, this function here. So this is how class component was created earlier, but notice that this code is super lengthy for, for now, and we are using a lot of this keyword here. So this is something um, that was, uh, this is something that you need to notice now. I'll be showing you something uh, with uh, uh, functional component with hooks later, but, Earlier, before version 16, this is how um, function component was uh, used. So if you see here, function component was just only displaying UI. So you cannot do anything. You cannot add a state to it. It doesn't change anything. This is how it was used earlier. Now, moving on to props. What are props? Props are properties that are, that are passed into a React components and they are passed via HTML attributes. Like I said before, they're uh, immutable and they're read-only. So here I have a, uh, I have a element, which this is, this is the element that you would find it, find it inside of index.js. And then here is a component that they created with greet. And what, is, what it does is uh, the render method at the top here called, uh, is called with the element. And then React calls greet component with name Deepa. So then the greet comp component returns the H1 uh, tag with the result. And then finally, React dom.render method updates the DOM and displays hello Deepa in the um, UI. So now let's see component uh, lifecycle. 
these are specifically for class components. So there are four steps to it. When you're creating a, a class component, it has a four, st uh, four, uh, state, uh, four uh, steps. So first you init initialize it, then you mount it, and then you update it. And then finally you un unmount it. So when you initialize it, initialize it, you set props and initial state, uh, initial state of the component inside the constructor, like I showed you before. And then mounting where would call you would call a component will mount and component did mount methods. And when you're updating anything in the component, it it will use something called as component will update method. And then finally, when you unmount a class function class component, it will unmount, it will use this method. So I have a simple code uh, sample here, which shows whenever this page is loaded, it's gonna show on the console that this has been loaded. Uh, I don't know how to get rid of this. So let me put this up here. So if you see here, I have a class component now and then the moment the page got loaded it shows that component did mount method here in the console and then whenever i i'm going to make whenever i'm i'm pressing this button here it's going to show a different state and then it's going to call these two methods here so this is this is how class component had life cycle um now so far, we have seen these features. Now we'll go take a look at how can we create hooks? Um, what are hooks? How can we create hooks? And then uh, we'll see how to handle events. And we can also see how conditional rendering works in React. So hooks was introduced in uh, around February 2019. And then um, earlier, like I said, in React 15, uh, Com functional components were stateless. You, it was just used for displaying static content. And then uh, if you had to write a functional component, you need to change it to uh, a class component in that case. So then uh, what happened is in React version 16, function, uh, to add state to functional component, this feature was added. So hooks add state to functional component. Now, let's see what are the basic hooks that are available. There are three basic hooks that are available in React, use state, use effect, and use context. So whenever you see something with use in React, those are referring to hooks. So what does use state do? Use state, as the name suggests, it tracks the state uh, of, the, of a functional component. And this hook is used to render the UI when data changes. So it can uh, track uh, strings, numbers, or a combination of all of these. This basically, this hook replaces this state, this state and this set state of a class component with a single hook call. So here is all these code samples are, are public. You can, you can go ahead and take a look at them even after. So um, if this thing loads. Come on. Okay. I have a couple of examples. So here, like I said, it, it adds states, right? So here I've gone ahead and uh, use first, first off, if you have to use use state, you need to import it uh, along with react in your file. And then here is where I've used use state inside my um, component here. And then the, by default, the state is uh, use state is zero, which is displayed here. And use state takes two, uh, two arguments here. So one is count, which updates if it's a variable. Whenever you make a click event, it just updates it. And set count is a function that, that is getting invoked whenever you do a button click. So this is how, so, so here the set, Set count of a uh, set count function is set to zero when I press uh, reset. So if I go ahead and add uh, or subtract, and then when I do reset, this is what happens within when you use uh, hooks. So the other example that I have here is um, using 
a object. How do you use, instead of adding a default one, uh, here I've added an object inside of uh, use state. So here I've added a uh, default object. So note that I have a, a car and set car and it displays, it is blue a car from 2020, right? So if I have to change this, I cannot go ahead, I, I cannot change here in my object itself. So if I have to change it, I have to create a function for it and then I can go ahead and change it. So here I've had a couple of functions here, which says update the color. And then uh, I have, uh, I have another function for updating the model. And note that I've, you can also add styling inside of uh, React. So here I've added the CSS. So if you see, I've created a variable, but in React, you make sure that it doesn't work like a regular CSS one. So here I've added a bag, background of pink, but in, in CSS, you would, uh, you would say it as background dash color. And here it's using camel case. So if I go ahead and make a click event, it's gonna show us red here. And then if I click, this changes too. So this is how uh, use state works in, use state hook works inside of a functional component. Now, the next one is use effect. Use effect is, is generally used to perform side effects in your component. It's basically whenever you, you want to fetch data from an API, or you want to read it from a local storage, or you want to listen to a button click, then you would uh, use um, use effect. It's, uh, it's used along with use, uh, use, uh, use state. And uh, here it takes two arguments. One is a function, and then there is a dependency. The de dependency here is optional. You don't have to give it, but it's, there are cases that you might need uh, to have dependencies too. So here is uh, a example for use effect. I have, again, here, I have a couple of, a couple of examples, one fetching data from the API and the other one for uh, a event listener. Here is an example for, um, I'm using two use states here. Note that the first one I've defaulted to zero. So here is this. And then the other one, I haven't given anything, but then it is an empty array. So what it does is it takes a uh, use effect uh, has a function and it calls back. And this is the one which would show, which would be sent to effect logs, which will be uh, printing it here. So if I go ahead and click this button here, it's gonna show up here. So use effect, you, I have, I've not added any dependencies here. You could add if you want to, it depends on the use case, but here I haven't added anything, it's optional. So this is how um, event listeners use, uh, the effect is used with event listener. Now, moving on to a, another example with uh, fetching data from the API. Just give me one minute. So as soon as the page loaded, you saw this message here. If you see, I've used a, um, third-party Axios here for fetching the data from, uh, from the API. So you can install dependencies in Code Sandbox using this uh, on, on the side, there's add dependencies. I've added Axios here. So it, Axios basically go, you can go get data uh, from, a, from a endpoint. And then it, if you see here, use state is using load message function. And then here I've not added any dependencies, but this load method, what it does is it gets um, data and then it sends it to set message. And then the set message you have, you it sends it here to message. And then that's how it is. It gets displayed in the UI. So there are two, uh, two uh, examples that we talked about how to fetch data from, um, from an API and what, how about, uh, 
and uh, adding uh, um, listeners to a button click. Now, the last one we are gonna be talking about is use context. Use context is used when you wanna manage a state globally. This is mainly used if you have um, parent-child um, components which are nested together. And you, you usually use a use context along with use state. You could also use use state alone to achieve this, but it, it leads into something called as prop drilling. So it's better to use uh, use context in that case. So you create a context and pass, a, pass them inside a child component, which I'll show you in a moment. Uh, yeah. Okay. So. Um, okay. Here is um, a comp. Uh, here is uh, here is a parent child uh, function that I've created. So here is a parent one. It has a use state of it, uh, with the default value, and it returns a child component. Right? The child component here uh, is getting. If you see here, uh, the child component is using props, right? So even though I'm not using anything inside of the child component, it still uses props here. So again, if I go down one below, I have, I have another component, which is a grandchild component. And here also I'm using props. You know, I'm using the same component and then the, uh, I'm using, the, I'm using uh, props everywhere in here along with the, along with use state. But this is, this is something that you have to pass props throughout this entire uh, set of uh, components that you have created. So to avoid this, you can use something called this, use context, which I have an example here. Uh, if this thing loads up pretty fast. So if you see here, I've used, I've created a global object here, uh, object as company uh, detail context, and I've created a context as null here. So when you see here, I've used that context and use this provider, which provides, a val provides the value to the context object. And here I'm not using uh, this inside this, um, uh, child component, right? I'm instead, it's just calling the child one here, but I'm not using any, any context here because it doesn't need it. So if I go down, I'm using, I've created a context here. I've used this use context here, and then I'm just using it only inside of a grandchild component. So if you see, it's instead of creating, you know, instead of passing props everywhere, you just need to pass the state where it's necessary. You don't need to unnecessarily pass it inside of a child component where it was not needed before. So there are other hooks available in React. These are some of the hooks that are there. Uh, I, I'm not gonna be talking about this, but I just wanted to mention it here that there are other hooks that you can use it for, uh, for various reasons if you wanna use it in your projects. And there are some rules when you, uh, when you use hooks. So React's, uh, uh, React hooks only works at the top level of, the fun of a functional component. You, can, uh, you cannot use hooks inside of loops, conditions, or nested functions. If you have to use them, you need to, there's an exception, you have to create your own custom hooks. I'm not gonna be talking about custom hooks. Again, uh, you can, if you wanna create your own, you could do so. There are ways to do it. I just want to mention it here as well. So another one is I mentioned about using different. Uh, you can use use uh, state um, as many times as, as as many times as you want in a function. However, if you use um, use state here, I've used use state here, and then it it has a name with Mary, and I'm also using. I'm also calling this name here, right? So if, if I have to 
Re React relies on the order of uh, hooks that are called. So as long as you have it in order, if you don't have this name here and you're trying to use it uh, down here in this use effect, it's not going to show up, it's going to complain. So make sure that if you, you can use as many use states and use effects inside a function, but make sure that you have uh, the order which React rely, really relies on. So now um, let's talk about handling events. In HTML, you, you pass them as a string, right? For a uh, click event. In React, you would uh, pass it as a uh, JSX. So you would be using um, a camel case in this case. And then um, another difference is that you cannot return false uh, to prevent default behavior in React. You must specifically use default prevent, uh, prevent default method. I would be showing this in the code along in a very few moment. Um, it's a synthetic event. It's been supported by React, so you don't have to worry about cross-browser uh, compatibility. So it, when would you use this? Whenever you want to, if, if you want to prevent uh, submitting a empty form, like a blank form, that's when you would use this. And we'll be uh, uh, you know, doing a code along and you'll be using this. So now let's see an example of how conditional uh, rendering works in React. So here I have a, I have three components. So the greeting component, what does it do is it, uh, it sees whether it has a condition. If the user is logged in, it returns a particular user greeting, like welcome back. And then otherwise it returns as guest greeting, which is please sign up, which is what it's showing up. So if I go ahead and set this to true, it's going to show welcome back. So this is how conditional rendering works in React. So now we have come to the end of this whole talk. We we'll just do a small code along. And this is what we will be doing. You'll be creating a small to-do list and um, you'll have a couple of buttons you can add. You will see how you can add a new, uh, item to the list, you can uh, mark one, mark them as complete, and then you can delete it. So if, if you want to fork this, I can just share this. Oh, Bill, did I share it with you? I think I did. So let me share it to everyone in the meeting room. So this is a small code along that I've, uh, I'm going to be showing. And I've gone ahead and created, I have added a screenshot of this. So this is how it's going to look. And then I've gone ahead and removed everything in, inside of all the um, gibberish here. There were a lot of comments that I, I removed them. And I created a folder with a couple of uh, uh, JSX files. And note that in some projects you would see uh, the extension as JSX. Some people use JS. It depends purely. It's it's it depends on your team or whoever is using it. I try to keep it as JSX because I know the difference. It's like here it's showing me the React icon. So here is I've 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 gone ahead and created an object with the use state. So these are a default object that will show and. In the application. Now let's go ahead and add um, functionality to this, right? So first off, first off, we need to be able to add a uh, add a list, right? So let's go ahead and add a function to it. Say const add to do. Then what does it take? It takes uh, uh sorry, do you have a, a, a error function here which takes a text. And then what does it do? 
you should be able to add it. So you ha I have, uh, um, let me create a um, variable that's new to those. New to those, which takes all these default values. So I would go add a spread operator and then say, okay, uh, you get all the to do's from here, uh, from the default one. And then you also add the ones that we are willing to add, right? Then I'm going to go uh, call this set to do function along with the new to do's. So We've added a, uh, this is a function for adding a item. So now let's see if we have to add a complete. Whenever uh, I click on this complete button, it has to strike through and say, it still has to show in the display, uh, but then it has to strike through. So let's go ahead and create this. Um, Most, um, complete to do. Then, what does it take? This one takes uh, an index, right? We have to, based on the index only, we can strike it off. So, if it's index, and then we create a function for it, or a function for it. And then, what does it do? It just, again, let me say, get these things in a variable. So, to do along with whatever that was already there. Um, then how do we, what do we need to do? We need to get the index and then we have to say this completed, right? So new to do's, uh, we have to get the index and then say this completed and then we have one set the two. So then you go ahead and update your set to do's again. So uh, if you have to go and add um, a delete delete uh, or delete functionality, what do you need to do? So here we have to find again, you have to take the uh, index of it and then you have to uh, take the index and then remove it, right? So let's create a function for it. Um, to do, I added these JSX already because I uh, this uh, IDE does not auto complete, so I find it difficult to do JSX inside of uh, this um, browser ID. I use VS Code, which is very easy to. I have shortcuts to do that. To do is your uh, you're getting. New to do's here again, and then what we're getting all the to do's from the uh, list, and then what you do is you remove it, right? So we use a JavaScript um, splice method where it takes uh, the index one, and then we can go ahead set to do's again. Okay? New to -dos. So now we have all the necessary functions for the functionality. Now let's go add the styling field. So how does it have to look like in the, if you go ahead and see uh, in the CSS, I've added a CSS here with the class names, which, you, which we'll be using inside of uh, the to-do and the to-do form as well. So let's create a div. Uh, this one does not let me, it doesn't autocomplete. So I kind of suck at using this. So here, go ahead, let's do a class name. Note that I'm using camel case. Here I've added to do for, I think I added to do one. Yes. Um, 
And then what are we going to do? We are going to add some styling. Um, how do we do this? We wanted to add some, whenever we try to do a, let's do some clicks. Uh, it's decoration, is that how it is? Yeah, I think so. To be on that is completed. So um, then if it is completed, then you have to say line through. Otherwise, leave it blank, right? So, and then we have to use this. JSX here, and then we'll do a couple of buttons here. Button on with um yeah. what do we have to do? Uh, we have to get for completed ones we need to strike to right completed to do. And then with that, you get the index of it, right? So once it's done, you have to, um, what button is this? It says completed. And then you close this button back. I'm very poor at using this one inside. This particular copy. I'm going to add this to, oh, did I miss up something? This is for. Remove. Hmm. This should be done. Hmm. Oh, yeah. So I note that you have to give this in two um, curly braces whenever you're trying to do styling through this. So this is where VS Code comes handy. So next, now let's go ahead and create um, what the form itself. So what we have to do here is where we are going to use, we'll be using hooks. So um, let's see, how do we use it? So first off, we need to create a hook. So we, let's say the hook would have a value, right? And then we need to know, we, we need to get the set value of what it is. And then use this effect, new state, sorry, new state of, Blank because we're not, we are already getting it. First, you know, to begin with, it's going to be empty. So, this is where we'll be handling the um, blank form submission. So, how do we add a function for it? Uh, handle, uh, submit. I've used all these things before, so I know that I would be messing up with the JSX. So, I kind of filled it before. We create an event, and then this event, what does it do? It takes event default, right? And then we can say inside of this, we can say, hey, if value is not, it's not there, then we can return alert, uh, say, what do you have to say? Hey, um, hey add an item, right? So now it's all coming up together, right? So once you're done, let's start with that. What do you have to do? You have to uh, return the rest, right? Let's add um, to do of value and then, then we can say set value. So, hello. So if you, if you see, let's see, 
uh, when I was testing this last time, this thing was not working. Let's see if it works. So I'm trying to, so now it shows up an alert saying that, hey, add an item, and then using this, this handle submit method. And then whenever I try to uh, add one, let's go ahead and say, um, add an item. So you can add one. Now let's see, let's delete one. Hmm. Delete is not working. What? Let's refresh this page. Mm, come on. Okay. How about this? This is not working as well. Let's go ahead and see. I know I did last time some mistake here. Do that. Um, hmm. Why is it not working? Does anybody see anything that is odd here? Let's go ahead and see this. What did I do? Hmm. Hmm. To this. Hmm. Right. I think last time it was working with the set to Let's see. Hmm. What does our error say? Uncheck um, 17. What did I do? Okay. This is, I, I expected this. I'm complete. Because I was, when I was testing this, I did this mistake too. Mm, let's see. Um, the on click, I think. Uh, I am uh, messing up with something, right? Yeah. The uh, error says on click line nine. Oh, yeah. I haven't, uh, line nine, yes. I think it's saying it should be C uppercase. This one? Um, button on click function. Oh yeah, thank you, thank you, thanks a lot. <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, now let's refresh this. Ah, sorry about that. This is why you need to use uh, <laughs> VS Code where you give, it gives you all the info. You know, it gives you option to, oh, now it's deleting. And now let's see why we are not able to strike through, right? Um, is my text before decoration line to it? Looks good. What is that I'm missing here? Hmm. Does the C to completed need to be capitalized? I wonder. Uh, no. I, 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 oh, this one? Yeah. Ah, yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thanks a lot. So, yeah, sorry. So this is a small one. A lot of typos. Sorry about that. I usually use VS Code. Okay. Now, um, if you can see my screen, let's move to this thing. And then we completed this small one. Sorry about that. I made a lot of uh, typos in here and I couldn't type. So um, now, Let's move on to the last part of it. So we talked a lot about the core features. Um, we talked about JSX, what is, what is it? It's Java, JavaScript syntax extension, nothing but writing HTML and CF, JS together. Please use VS Code, do not use this browser ID where you will make a lot of mistakes. Um, <laughs> you don't get any prompts as well. So um, how, did, how did we render elements? We, uh, it, a rendering elements happens through react dom .render method. What is a component? It's a piece of, think of it as a puzzle piece. It's a, a reusable piece of UI. And we talked about life cycle component. We talked uh, about the basic hooks. And finally, we wrapped it up with the handling events and conditional rendering. 
if you with this knowledge you can you can try to build something like this and like how we did this we we created a button and the test uh, alert but you can also try to insert some images and this with this knowledge you can definitely be able to do that so what would be the next step uh, from here you can take uh, react to uh, react knowledge to the next level you can learn how to um, create custom hooks and also i would say that if you are trying to explore more on the use concept try to learn higher order component uh, components before you use use uh, context um, as well and then you can explore back end and if you are a person who's uh, who's a mobile enthusiast you can also try developing mobile apps using react native so with that said, thank you so much. And uh, please connect with me in LinkedIn. And if you can follow me in Twitter, that'll be great too. And here are my references. And I have one more thing to say. I am also an organizer at uh, Google Developer Group San Jose. We also conduct events. Uh, I have an event coming up on February 10th. Somebody from a AWS is gonna come and talk about Flutter um, app development and Flutter um, app development using Flutter and Amplify, AWS Amplify. It's on the 10th of February. If you can make it, that'll be great. Thank you so much for your time. And please let me know if you have any questions. Cool, thank you, Deepa. Very good presentation. Um, only a couple, only a few questions. Um, so the first one was with the introduction of React hooks, are classes for components in React unnecessary? I'm sorry, can you say that again? With the introduction of React hooks, are classes uh -huh. for components in React unnecessary? Oh, it depends. See, if you have projects that have been created a while back, see earlier when we were using in my uh, company, we were using React and then uh, a lot of it were all class-based uh, components. So now we are slowly using hooks. And if you have already, it still works. But if you if you are starting out new, if you wanted to uh, totally refactor or creating something new, you would use it with uh, functional uh, components. You can still, it still works with the uh, functional component as well, uh, the class component as well. Next question is from, the beginning of your talk, uh, they said previous, you know, prev state, prev state, right? Is that used or could you just do count plus one? Oh, let me get that. That was from like in the beginning. Uh, yeah, it is, it was in the class component that I showed. I yeah. Just give me a minute, let me bring it up here. Here. So, am I sharing? No, right? Let's share. So, are you talking about this? Oh, no, not this, I think. Um, I'm not sure. Which one was that? So all these are, okay. Is this the example that you were asking? Oh, previous state is, is said here, right? Yeah. So yeah, it just takes uh, whatever the state is before. So if you go ahead and see it, it gets, um, oh, I think I, I should have defined it here. I haven't defined it at all. Uh, we need to do this. 
because I'm not using this at all. I've not created anything this way. Let's see. Okay, so this is Sorry, it was a mistake, I guess. Jay, oh. Jay put in no. there. No, 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 no. Uh, I'm sorry? Jay put in there that it, that was his question when I when I use state heaven running to heaven to use prev state and just use the count plus one. Oh, okay. Oh, well, this one he was talking about. This one? Oh, prev count? Yeah. Oh, okay. This is a function here. I'm creating an error function here, right? So I'm I am so stupid here. I made a mistake. Hang on, just give me a minute. This is a function that I'm I'm adding a error function here, right? Uh, yeah. so, so here. So this is an error function, which is basically taking what is the whatever the previous uh, count is, and then it's incrementing. It. This is an incremented function, right? I'm I'm using the same thing here as a decremental function. This is a error function here. You're defining a function with whenever you have it, and then you're sending across, and then whenever you make a click event, it's going to add, right? Does that make sense? Yeah. So he's asking, could you use set counts, count plus one instead? Oh, instead. Oh, we don't need to use this at all. Let's try that. Count plus one, yeah, I mean. Set count, set count, count plus one, right? Count is. Oh, count plus one, yeah. Yeah. But then this, Sorry. this function only gets, uh, gets, uh, value out of it, but you, I am not so sure whether you can use the function itself inside to get this. So let's see what is it showing. There is some okay, you got an extra, extra opening brace. Mm. Parentheses, okay, yeah. Parentheses. And then this guy is gonna. I think you only need one, right? Uh, yeah, uh, no, two. Oh, yes, one more. Here, no. It's still this complaint on something. Yeah, I know I need one around set count. And set count, wait, you got two set counts. <laughs> there you go. And then we have to decrement it here, right? Get rid of the, yeah, the yeah. Cool. Oh yeah, it does work as well as well. You don't need to dry code. <laughs> In this case, it does work, huh? Yeah. But there might there might be some case where it'd be beneficial to reference previous state? Uh, if you have to use, uh, if you want to reference it with the previous state, yes, might be. But in this case, it, it does work. So it depends by case by case. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Um, question, will there be a final code to look at? I'm too slow at typing along. Oh yeah, I can, I can share the whole bit. If you can go to code sandbox, all these, um, all these, um, I don't know how to share this from here. Okay. Uh, you can look up my user ID uh, in here because there was a way to share this last time I was able to figure this one out. All these are, um, I can share